What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the podcast. You are tuned in to Two Catholic Dudes. My name is Ryan Klaus. My name is Danny Cleary. And as always, we're not priests, we're not theologians, we're just two Catholic dudes, and we're talking about our faith. Yeah, our faith. Our faith. <laughs> what do you? Uh, all right, we've had the same set for uh, a few different podcasts now. Thanks for driving down here, always. Yeah, man. I was I was just looking at this. So we always have like our phone hooked up here it's got like a live feed of what's going on on the video Mm -hmm. we've had the same blue behind my head and purple behind danny's head do you want to switch sometime or do you like the purple uh i i I like purple okay uh here's the the best part i love about when we when we do this is people are listening like what so like we don't care about what color imagine purple behind his head or just tune into our youtube channel and watch red behind us it's a little dark but 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 people be like whoa it's a little dark, but, but it'll th- be like the most positive episode we can possibly think of, but like the darkest looking show. So kind of like the episode we're about to have right now. Yeah, it's a, a lot. It's a bit dark in in theme, but the underlying nature of our episode today is positive. I know we just had an episode, we kind of titled it Positivity. It was our origin story, but um, we this, would, one's, go ahead, yeah. this one's going to be how we want positivity to be a tool because we, we preach positivity. We preach, uh, being kind, living in the joy of Christ, seeing the beauty of the church. That's, that's our whole, uh, MO. Wait, right? sidebar, sidebar. Yeah. I know you wanted to finish that thought, but speaking of positivity, dope haircut, man. Thank you. Dope haircut. Uh, we have an amazing parishioner at our church that, uh, she cuts hair and I had the blessing of being able to go, uh, and get my hair cut by her. And she did, uh, I was, I was losing my mind cause sometimes you just feel better after a haircut and she I don't know the feeling well obviously uh but uh, she talked a lot about like taking care of you and how a haircut for a lot of people is them taking care of themselves and she's so amazing uh you you know her but we uh we talked Kathy about, Johnson yeah we talked about faith thank you Kathy the whole time we talked about her our, daughter uh, no uh her daughter's name faith yeah but no we talked about just the church si- and side note <laughs> side what note are you doing I'm note. in the middle of talking you're not talking <laughs> I'm talking okay finish we are talking about church the whole time and faith life and and our growing faiths and how we were favorite scripture it was just like a really amazing conversation over a haircut the haircut probably took a lot longer than it was supposed to because we were too busy talking but uh, it was a really big blessing okay there's now something I'm there's done. something to now that there there go. is something to that I, I you know sharing that that human interaction that human contact through a haircut through through a simple gesture right through a simple act so, Kathy, thank you for, for doing that for Danny. He looks wonderful. But, uh, yeah, sh- she has a daughter named Faith. She was in my youth choir when I was back at that parish, and I would joke with her because, like, every song I go, f- does it ever get tired? Uh, or do you ever get tired of hearing us sing about you or sing about – because, like, every, it's always about your faith or about, you know, yeah. her name is in the song. That's gotcha. a funny story. Hilarious. Great. great Good joke. Yeah. Everyone's <laughs> laughing. Stupid. Um, wait, no, I, I listen I listen to Air One Radio, speaking of haircuts, and like you said, um, the, the self-esteem boost you can get and, mm-hmm. and, like, the way you hold yourself when you get a good haircut for most people. I don't know. I'm, I'm weird. So, you know, it's about three years now, by the way, since this started. Uh, but anyways, this this lady, she went through cancer. They they told the story on the air. She had cancer, and lost her hair, and realized the value, at least in her life, of mm. uh, what hair can do for a person. Sure. And so she was just volunteering, and she would go around and volunteer to cut homeless people's hairs for hair for them. So she would wheel around a kit, and she would just ask if they wanted a haircut, and she would just stop right on the street and oh, cut beautiful. their hair. And you know, like the. Uh, just the value that that someone in that situation can get from first of all that that human interaction that contact and then and then how they you know how they perceive themselves you know when you dress sloppy all day like me I'm in here wearing sweats uh, I, maybe I'm just different because I have long hair and sweats and I don't mind but some people if they're if they're not dressed you know if if you dress up in like a three piece suit and you have a nice haircut and you're looking sharp you feel sharp right. Something about it, you, you you feel like you could you could accomplish anything. You could yeah, take I, on the day. Yeah, yeah. I think it's de- depending on the person. Like right. someone has their like their like power outfit. Like right. when they feel like when you feel like I can take on the world in this in this. And for some people, it's their sports uniform. For some people, it's a three piece suit. Right. For some people, it's their vestments. For some people, it's for me sweats, sweats and a hoodie. And a hoodie. <laughs> um, for me, it's like a ball cap and a pair of cargo shorts. I'm like, let's do this. Um, but, but but so you got your hair cut, and this is the first podcast in like five weeks that you haven't had the hat on. Yeah. And I haven't had my hair 
I've had my hair up and it's down for some, I don't know, I'm just doing my thing. Anyway, but yeah, yeah it can be a big self-esteem boost to that's look right. your best and that, that that's the point of this. This is nothing. We actually have a topic, guys. Yeah. We do have a topic. So all of those people that have been like, get to the point. We actually just show. gave solid advice to a newcomer podcast who um, they're they're young kids and they wanted to start a podcast and like that's amazing because everything about our podcast is don't be afraid to share your faith right. don't be afraid you, even if you don't if you don't know everything if you don't have all the answers if you're not a theologian if you're not a priest whatever the case may be you have a story that's valuable to somebody else right and so share that however you can and so they wanted to start a podcast they reached out to us we listened to it today and we gave them some critical feedback on it um, and we're just throwing all that out the window <laughs> and we yeah the, basically everything that we just told them we did we, we did the opposite so if right you guys now. are watching sorry about that sorry about that um <laughs> so our t- we do do, have t- do as we say not as we do that's right we do have a topic you got to learn the rules before you can break them uh that's a good point right speaking of rules <laughs> okay <laughs> and breaking the rules that's what we get called on a lot that we're rule breakers when it comes to the faith yeah um we're going to talk a little bit about today about as we talked about earlier, we're very big on positivity. And I think right now in the age of COVID and online and a lot more online debate and a lot more online presence, there is also a lot more online hatred that is spewed, especially amongst the church. And And I'm not going to talk about people that are against people of faith because there's plenty of that that we could talk about. But today I specifically want to get into, uh, we just wanted to share our thoughts on Catholics that are hating on other Catholics. Mm -hmm. We've talked about this in quite a few episodes and it's kind of become like our, one of our staples uh, and what we stand for is being the people that are kind of against that online trash talk. And so we're going to try to do this delicately because, you know, (laughs) we definitely don't want to become a episode of where we're trash talking, where we talk about not trash talking. (laughs) So, but I think that it's a, it's, it's important for us to address these topics talk about them and and reflect and 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 we're just going to kind of talk about it from our point of view and and if it resonates with you or if you completely disagree either way you're along for the ride so um yeah there is so much hate in the world and there's so much division in the world now more than ever especially here in the in the united in the united states oh man i can talk today but there's so much division especially with this political uh all the political agendas in the election coming up We'll probably have an episode on political parties and stuff. Today is not that day. When we feel really courageous. But there's, I know, we're not especially political, but it's something that should be addressed. So, but there's just so much division. It's like, and in, in our in our Catholic and our Christian faith, I don't know the number, but it's astronomical how many different how many different uh, denominations of Christianity the Christian Christianity. Why can't I talk today? But how many different divisions there are because people can't agree and they start hating on one another, and then then a group splits off, right. and then before you know it, we have the number that we have today. But uh, in our Catholic, just alone in our Catholic world, that's supposed to be unified. That's what Catholic means, like worldwide. We have so much hatred and division uh, spewing across the aisle. Uh, yeah. To one another and it's like why we have so many more problems. Why are we creating more amongst ourselves? Yeah, I agree with you man and uh, and it's been something that we've been kind of dealing with especially since we started this ministry and I want to talk about a, a couple of the points today just from my perspective because uh, it's something I'm very passionate about is this whole thing is uh, Kind of the uproar that it has caused uh, Ryan and I, as he so delicately put it earlier, we're Norvis Ordo boys. Norvis Ordo boys <laughs> right here. Through and through. And uh, for some people, it's like, yeah, great. Like, that's good for you guys. And for other people, it's like, well, see you in hell. See you in hell. I was joking <laughs> earlier. I was like, there's there's people that are like the opposite Oprah. Oprah. Why can't I talk today? Oprah Winfrey. Oprah. That's her name. And they're like... You're going to hell, and you're going to hell, and you're going to everyone look under your seat. You all got a ticket to hell. It's like, why? Are you kidding me? Yeah. And 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 that's the thing is, and I'm not here uh, discrediting or saying that hell doesn't exist. That's not what I'm saying at all. We do need to recognize when there's evil in the world. That's absolutely true. Uh, Tuesday, Evil's right. right there in all the comment <laughs> sections of everything on social media. <laughs> That's, but yes, but the point is, uh, I, I, I think we're trying to make that's our, on that's that. Our, that's the podcast, just cool. <laughs> well, wow, Ryan, there he is. Can't speak because it's fired up. But the point is, is too, we're trying to make 
on this one, I think, is don't mask your, like, evil can mask itself as trying to stand up for the good. And I think that that's a big problem. And something especially uh, near and dear to our heart is we've been watching a lot of the attacking that happens on to Bishop Barron. Now, Bishop Barron doesn't need two Catholic dudes to come into his defense. Bishop Barron like, is... Oh, thank goodness. Yeah. Danny and Ryan, the <laughs> two you. Catholic dudes, are standing up for me. <laughs> now I can sleep better at night. Like <laughs> He's fine. He, he, he goes toe-to-toe with atheists. He stands against the, the church militant folk that rip him to shreds. He went nose-to-nose. They you know, try, attempt to rip attempt him to shreds. Attempt to rip him to shreds. And, but, and I almost like... I love Bishop Barron because he just kind of doesn't give them the time of day and doesn't give them a voice on his incredible platform. And I think that... and. You, I, I, wait, I want to stop you right there. But yeah. He doesn't give them a voice, and I think that's very important because right. what these people are doing is again creating this this spiral of negativity, and he doesn't want to give that a voice. I was gonna look. I looked up this figure because I wasn't sure if it was going to be a talking point. Turned out that it w- that it is for the opposite reason that I was that I was assuming. I looked up the number of followers that Word on Fire and Bishop Barron have on Instagram, and then I looked up the number of followers that Dr. Taylor Marshall has. We're not, by the way, we're not afraid to, to say names on this podcast this episode. We're not afraid anymore, but. We're not afraid anymore. <laughs> like Home Alone, Kevin and Home Alone. <laughs> okay, uh, and I was like, you know, what if, what if? I don't know how many followers he had, but I, if it was more than Word on Fire or Bishop Barron, I would have been really upset because uh, people love like controversy. People love polarizing figures, and he is very polarizing, right? But it was not the case. He only had thirty thousand followers. Thirty thousand. Doctor Taylor Marshall. Unless I looked up the wrong account, maybe his like podcast account has more or something. But it seemed like it. It should have more than that, but it didn't. And Bishop Barron has like two hundred thirty-nine thousand, right? So the good prevails in that situation. Um, again, unless I didn't look hard enough. But so he wasn't giving the voice to that platform to be allowed, allowing to to seep through into his wonderful platform. Yeah, good. And and I think that. And here's the thing on it is, I. I really don't know. I don't really watch anything that Dr. Taylor Marshall has. I've watched a couple videos. You see little clips, and I've seen clips, and I watched the stuff where he talked on Bishop Barron. And I don't like. I'm not going to say that this person is a bad person at all. I don't. I don't know you. I don't know him, and he's. You know, I probably will never ever speak to him. But I look at the comments on his videos. That's what mm. I want to get to. Because I'm not, and I'm not talking about Bishop Barron either, but I want to talk about the comments on his, or the comments on his videos. Is the people out there that comment back to each other, it is vile. The things that people say, the things that people call uh, other Catholics, you know, in it, 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 that's where my problem comes in. Well, I think it, I think it elevates to a, a, a new pitch mm. for the, in the comment section because comments, on anywhere you go, it's a faceless, it's a nameless mm-hmm. situation. You're free to do it without any consequences. Taylor Marshall, everybody knows his face, everybody knows his voice, and he stands up for what he believes in. And he speaks very boldly about the he stuff. Spe- I I happen to disagree with pretty much everything, but right, he. I, but I, he, at least he says it, and everyone knows who he is. And I and I I believe that he's intending to do good with what he says, but the way he does it, I think I think. You can you can be good, but then the stuff that what you say is evil, and so certain things that he says, it's just it's it's just downright mean and and evil in in nature. And yeah. what that does is it, it it extends into the comment section where you have those nameless, faceless people who take that to a whole new level, right? Right. So, and you were watching a video before we started this episode. I don't even know who that guy was, but he was saying some nasty stuff. Nasty stuff. Uh, you know, calling I, you know. Calling some bishops and priests just doofuses and stuff like that, saying that they were purposely trying to destroy the church. And there's just so much nastiness online. And we see it not just in the faith, but right now, politically, it's absolutely absurd. Uh, You know, you watch the way that people, and I've fallen into it a little bit and then kind of pulled myself out of it. I made like one or two comments and like I had people people even in my family that were trying to start arguments with me, extended family, not like my parents or anything, but like you you get into it and you're like, this is just, how is this helpful to like speak? Like not, and I'm not trying to say like, like on my post that was tame. It wasn't anything crazy. It was just people disagreeing and Mm -hmm. and healthy disagreement is fine. And that's a good thing. And it's part of life and it's part of growth. And you have to be, if you're going to share your opinion, you have to be open to somebody else's. But 
there's a way of doing that. And this is the point I've been trying to get to the whole thing. And I, I just keep derailing. Well, you know? I couldn't figure out how to get to it. And sure. I said it earlier and I couldn't remember how to phrase it is you can disagree with somebody. You can have a difference of opinion and still have respect for them as a human being. And especially we go back to the Catholics and Cat, uh, the, the Catholic on Catholic cyber attacks. Um, you can still have love and respect for this person as a Catholic without just tearing them to utter shred and say, calling names and like disagree, disagree all you want. But when you start to attack a person, that's when problems arise. And even if you're attacking them and you're like, oh, this is for the good of the church. I just, my thought is if, if I was somebody, say I said something that somebody didn't like, and it happened to me, honestly, when, when we were getting first started and we got kind of all wound up by all the uh, over the traditional folk. The, I, I don't want to say all traditional folk, but the more radical ones that were the messaging radical us. Yeah. I got really disheartened. I was at a point where I'm like, if this is Catholic, maybe I'm not Catholic. Because this is not anything I've ever known or grown up with and anything like the faith that I love, anything like the God that I read about, anything like the Eucharist that I, sh that I, that I uh, participate in. It, it was just so vile. And I'm like, this can't be it. And I still see people dealing with it to this day. And it's just heartbreaking. And uh, Bishop Barron came on and did a video recently where he just went, enough. Like stop, <laughs> just we're gonna stop. talk about that word. Stop, in a second, but yeah, stop doing that. Mm -hmm. Stop being so hateful. You disagree. Disagreement. I look at uh, Thomas Aquinas. His whole yeah. Summa Theologica is based on. I'm gonna I'm gonna explain your argument in the best way possible that I can, but I'm gonna understand your argument. I'm gonna right. understand your viewpoint, your stance. Yeah to the fullest extent that I possibly could, I'm going to appreciate you for the viewpoint that you're coming from. And then I'm going to explain it back to you, but then I'm going to explain my counter argument uh, in a good and healthy way. And he would always just destroy the argument. Right. But you can't just, aim at destroying that argument without fully understanding it and so that that goes back to fully understanding the person behind that argument as yeah. well he was making up the other or he was just taking the other arguments uh without a person behind it but just for argument's sake right but that when, when we're trying to tear down somebody else's argument let's fully understand where they're coming from first as a person yeah and let's let's love someone truly as a, as a child of God and then where are they coming from in their life in their stance let me understand their problem whatever whatever stance they're coming from and then I will show them with with full good intent uh, charitably how m I might disagree with them I think it's a good point see the person not the comment not the argument not the opinion mm -hmm. there's a person behind those things a person with a story a person that's carrying their own cross, a person who clearly, if they're on a Catholic anything, that God has clearly touched their life and their heart and is pursuing them as God pursues all of us. And for us to just ugh, yeah, okay, discredit them, like I, 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 I hate that. Oh, I hate it. I have a few points. I want to go back before I forget this, but I, I, I have like four different points, but I know I'm going to forget two of them. Um, I want to talk about you. You dived into a little bit to the political realm. I want to talk about that. This won't be the political episode. Just a, a quick side note on that: in that, uh, in in this pol in any political campaign, uh, right now it seems to be insane. The it, it's almost like there's a pen, there's been a pendulum swinging in the political realm for so many years. You know, the right swing. You know, it was it was kind of here, but as it starts getting a little bit more mo more momentum, the left swings a little bit further to the left, and the right swings further to the right. That's, a, a, that's a great point. We're I mean, literally it, at a point where it's it's fully, full swing. It's full swing. Uh, it's almost doing the loop to loop on the swing set, right? Yeah. Uh, you ever try to do that when you were a kid? Nope. It's impossible. I just jumped off when I got high enough. Yeah. So let's just jump off the swing set, you <laughs> yeah. guys. Uh, two uh, guys, dudes, ready to jump off that political swing <laughs> set. So we're it's it's so far left and far right. Everyone's disagreeing, but I think it comes from just 
in terms of society, we've been, we've been, it's ingrained in us to disagree wholeheartedly with one another, to be polarizing, yeah. to spew this, this negativity, this, this division amongst us in our secular society, in our political realms. And it's showing its face so, so terribly in our political election, our campaign right now. Yeah. I mean, just, just through the Trump election alone, we, uh, my family member, like my mom was uh, like so close with one of my older cousins. She was closer to my mom's age. They would talk like every night on the phone and she knew that my mom voted one way and she voted the other. And she literally shut out my parents and has not contacted them since like a year before the, the, the Trump election four years ago. Like they have not talked. My mom would send letters, uh, write Facebook messages, nothing just gone because of a, a stupid political divide and and she's assuming things I won't go into detail but like the division that our world is creating in us is ridiculous so anyways that I think that innate quality in us to want to fight to want to divide is seeping in it in social media in our Catholic world amongst Catholics and we're just used to it at this point we're used to it and so we're that pendulum swinging more again it's it's very it, it's paralleling from the political realm you know it's it's left and right and we're having that same wide swing from left and right and their youth and their their attain and i think why the attacks continue is because they work look at like in, in, in not in a good way but like you look at the political campaigns and it's instead of saying what what are you going to do what is your camp? Why is your campaign going to be good? What is what are what are the good things that you're going to do and accomplish with your uh, whatever office, what the office that you're running for? What they what do they do? They say this guy's horrible, this lady's horrible, they're terrible. This is why our country's going to suck if if you if you vote for this person, right? Absolutely. it's all negativity. And but but then they end up gaining they they gain up so much traction from those negativity those smear campaigns, yeah. And, and the same thing is happening in it, the Catholic it, world. It's the same thing in the church, is because it's like is people will sit there and go, oh well, if everybody goes to goes back to tradition and just only does Latin and and does and and only does things this orthodox way, all this all these horrible things are going to happen. And then on the other side of it, people will go, oh, if everything's modern and if you have guitars and masks and if you do all this other stuff, everything is going to be horrible. Instead of looking at both of them and going. What are the really beautiful things that both of these bring to the table? Obviously, the churches saw them both as beautiful elements because they're both valid. But like, instead of looking at it like you're exactly like you're saying of what are the good that can come of this and what are the good that can come of this? We're looking at how the the bad things that we think are going to happen or the bad things that we that we believe in. And that's our focus. And that's all we can fix it. We're fixating on that bad. Then I think when we do that, we miss all the good. You miss the good, and like I, I've talked about it on multiple episodes. My the same metaphor that I keep bringing back about poker. Like people always want to tell you about their bad hands, and they they can never see like the good hands that they played in that in that poker session. And I always try to like say, well, I'm sure there was plenty of good happening in that game, but they're like they only focus on the negative. So if you're on social media scrolling, and uh, and somebody you see all these like good positivity posts, but then you know what gains your attention? That that smear that 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 smear campaign that attack that negativity you end up like getting sucked into it. Well, and to be honest with you, what it made me with this whole thing all goes back to because I'll, I'll speak to personal experiences is is when that happens, it makes me almost not even want to bother with the other side of it. You know, like when you're hearing all the terrible things that the Novus Ordo Mass or that the the fun, the nice church, the, the nice, church of, the, the, church the church of, of nice. nice, church of nice, which is the, which is what they, they, that's what they're calling our camp, I guess. But the church of nice, all the terrible things that that does to the church, all the terrible people that are in it and they're all going to hell and they're sinners and they're heretics. And these are evil people. It makes me want to go, well, I'm not going anywhere over there near you. So if you're trying to convince me that what you're doing is the way to go, you're doing a terrible job because I want nothing to do with you because you're so hateful. Yeah. I'd rather just go over here. And like that's where I want to be able to say, well, hold on. This is important because I've known this my whole life. And maybe that has an element in politics too, but I'm not speaking to that. I'm speaking to in the church setting. You, I, don't, I can't even see the beauty that you're claiming because you're so busy covering it up with your hatred. Yes. You know what I mean? I talk about this often as well. Bishop Barron's such a hero of mine. He preaches a lot on reaching people through beauty. There's beauty, goodness, and truth. 
-hmm. But in order to reach the truth, you need to be led through the beauty. But so many people try to preach fire and brimstone that you should know the truth without ever encountering and, and showing them the beauty and the, and the goodness. Um, I said, we're not, I'm not afraid to talk. Go ahead. Well, there's a good point on that, that I I don't, I I don't want to run out of time, but it's, I read it. Oh, we're not going to run out of time, brother. I read it. I mean, on the, before our break (laughs) or our one second break, but I read on in a comment section once when we were talking about it. And it's like, when you're feeding a child, right? You start the child on milk before it can eat meat to get its protein, right? At first it needs milk. It can't handle the hearty meat. And I think there's a lot of Catholics in the world right now that are still, maybe even if it doesn't matter what age they are, maybe they're still milk Catholics. They still need milk. They still need it kind of in, in small, they can't handle that hearty meat just yet. They haven't gotten to that point in their faith journey. God hasn't spoken to them in that way just yet. But do we just throw that out because it's, oh, well, they're not there yet, so they suck. Like, no, that doesn't make sense. We should be nurturing and helping them so that they, just like you're saying, get them in with the beauty so that they can understand the truth. Everyone is on a different level in terms of their faith and their spiritual journey. And for you to blanket everybody in the same, in the same realm, in the same vein, and say, you're wrong. And you're going to hell because of this? Well, you don't even know this person. You don't know where they're coming from. And maybe, the, yeah, like you said, I love that analogy. They're on a milk diet right now. And they and and like you said earlier as well, maybe them seeing you attacking them on the comment section or on your video. Pushes them the other way. You go, ah, this milk tastes pretty good. I was, I was considering going to applesauce, but I don't know. I think I'm, I, I, I'm done. I'm done. I'm out. Yeah. You I, know? I, I have a story on this that uh, of, a, of a prime example that I heard of, of the extreme uh, level that that happened and, I, and I'll share it but why don't we why don't we take our we take a break early. And let's we'll do it. Back to it all right okay so back to what I was talking about that the this brief story that I want to talk about on a the the more extreme level of the traditional uh, negativity that kind of like pushed me like what are you th- that's crazy. Um, is there was a podcast that did a response to one of our episodes. Oh, right. I forgot about that. I and, forgot about it for good reason. But yeah, like, And like, they told us that they were going to speak charitably. I'm not going to name the podcast. Um, which they, they tried to. They, they tried they, to, but one thing came off, and maybe I heard it wrong. No, you didn't. You didn't. But this was terrible. one thing that I heard, I was like, I like turned it off because I was so mad. Uh, but it was that, so obviously, uh, we... I receive communion in in the hand, and I guess everybody does at this point. Most people of, do at this point because of COVID. Yeah, um, I understand the beauty of of that people want to receive on the tongue. That's amazing. That's great. God bless you. And I think that that you can know the reverence of of Christ in the Eucharist and receive it on the hand. All I think that that you you can both and situation. Um, I also was in charge before COVID of a youth mass where the teens would be in charge of the lecturing, the ushering, the extraordinary ministers of the Eucharist, where they would be able to distribute the sacrament and stuff like that. They went through an extensive training program. They knew what it was. They all did it with such reverence. I was, it was, it was a beautiful thing for our church and a very lively part of our community. You were there, you saw it, saw the fruits of it. I watched it make a lot of young people uh, show up to mass for that vital age. It's where, so yeah, important when, that- when they were on the cusp of being the nuns, they were at mass, they were involved in mass, and they were helping others to be inspired to be. So on that point, uh, they were they had mentioned about me uh, having young people to, and they said that if say, for instance, that if someone had given communion on the hand and a small, tiniest little piece was to fall on the floor, and then the next person in line was to come up and step on it, because the Eucharistic minister didn't... They didn't, were talking didn't, microscopic, microscopic which, which actually piece. isn't even theologically correct. But, Go ahead. but that, that that was a sin. If, the, if the, that, that, you say it was a young lady, that if she did that, that that sin of her giving you communion on the hand and a microscopic piece falling and someone stepping on it was a worse sin than if they were to have an abortion. Yeah, they said it's a worse sin than and I getting was, an abortion. I was like, you're kidding me. Right. That's so, absolutely ridiculous. Because A... I think that it's discrediting the beauty of what this person is doing as distributing community and everything else Two, I think that it's like, you know, this is, this is going to be, I apologize for anybody that's listening to this and thinks like, Danny, what are you, that doesn't make any sense. But 
I believe that God is the most powerful being in all of the cosmos. He created everything that is, that is, that ever will be, and that was. You don't think that if God being physically in communion, humbling himself, coming down to communion, small piece of God falls to the floor, microscopic piece, and he saw a foot coming, don't you think he'd be like, I'm out of here? <laughs> is that, I don't know how heretical that may be, but my thought is, how are you going to compare that or, or, to somebody having an abortion? Or, or the, what was the intent? Was like, the was the int- so even even if what if there was a piece that was big she enough she didn't go yeah. right right so even if there was a piece that was big enough and it was and everything happened unintentionally and it fell to the floor and someone unintentionally no one knew and someone stepped on it were they intentionally stepping on the face of Jesus of and, and, course and not. saying like you know what I mean and, and and exactly and it's like do you think that they're God's like, going to take offense and so, say well, you know so this girl purposely was irreverencing communion by throwing it on the floor which is untrue or that this person that didn't get every single piece uh, perfectly you know, it, it just it was so ridiculous to me that that was the comparison right, they were right, being right. made. So yeah, I, it made me be like, you know what? If this is the kind of language and the kind of comparisons that are used in that community of people, I want nothing to do with it. Right. And it, then, I, so I'm not even willing now to go see the beauty of traditional Latin. Right. Because if that's the extremism that's being said, I'm going the other direction even harder. And, and I think that's happening. Sorry to cut you off again, but I think that's going to happen to the young people of our church. Yeah. Is we're as as I've heard so many people claim that. Oh, well, modernism is the reason that the young ch- that there's nobody in the pews, that there's no young people. That you know, I'll tell you why they all left. A lot of them went to the Protestant churches because the Protestant churches were having engaging speakers and amazing music and production value and all these amazing things that people were going there because we weren't providing that. We weren't giving them what they wanted. And then if there's young, vibrant Catholics in this world that are like, you know what, let's bring this level of worship to the Catholic Church. Let's make our liturgies beautiful and amazing and engage Shut them down. people. They're like, you guys are the problem. <laughs> Shut You're them down. going to hell. Cancel and it's culture. Like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Uh, it's just it's just untrue. In right. my, from my experience and everything I've seen, it's un it, it's not that, oh, the kids are craving the hardcore uh they, they're not they don't understand that they may be able to get there and find that and that might work for some people but there's there's plenty of people who need the the, the, the more they, modern way of, they, of of they need worship they need the applesauce yeah. You got to lead them from the milk to the applesauce and people are trying to shove steak down their throat and they, they ain't having it. Right. So again, these guys who are on this <sighs> podcast, they tried to do it charitably, honestly did. I listened to the whole thing. They weren't trying to attack us, but what they were doing was they were again, spewing that negativity, that hate in their speech in the, and they were, they were shoving steak down our throat at anyone's throat. And oh, well steak. And, and it was just belittling at the beginning too, where it was too. like, We've been you guys before. Before we found the greatness that is what we know now. We were we were you kids. Right. No, you don't. You've never been me cuz you don't know the beauty that I've seen then. Right. You don't know you haven't seen a heart completely and utterly changed through the beauty of someone playing a song uh you know on their on their guitar, the forbidden instrument. I'm playing you guitar know, like, exclusively at my mass at my parish right now because we're doing mass outside and we don't have the capability to lug uh, I kind of don't want it's so much work. Regardless. But but I can play guitar just fine. And I've been playing guitar outside and people have been coming up like in tears saying how much and it's just me singing with a guitar. I'm not like gloating or uh, you know, but they say like how much emotionally uh they've they've gotten from it because I've, I've been able to like pour my heart out in, in worship in song yeah. and not be bogged down by all the rigmarole that sometimes leading a choir does. So I'm able to give of myself so much during this, this quarantine musically with, awesome. a, with a guitar, with a guitar. And, and let me be clear. We're not saying that if you really, really connect with traditional Latin mass, that it's a bad thing. That's a beautiful thing. It's amazing. We pray for you and it's fantastic. And honestly, I wish that I had the opportunity to go to one, I still want to, but honestly, I've had a bad taste put in my mouth by all the negative right. hatred that's been thrown at me. 
Right. So uh, we're getting a bit off topic because we're getting back to our traditional life. Like, this is like a multi. It's always what it comes. It's to. a multi-part episode when you're listening to two Catholic dudes. You know what you're getting. You're getting a Nova Sordo and Latin Mass episode. But this is really about social media. It's it, that's what it comes down to. That's just what it comes from because those are the negative comments we saw. Exactly, and it's and it's usually Latin Mass or, or super super trad people commenting. Church militants. Church. So yeah, like. But it counts like church militant. There's a bunch. Okay, it's not Latin Catholicism because uh, he's a buddy of ours. He's great. Uh, so Latin Catholicism on Instagram. Let's talk about him because let's talk about people on Instagram. Yeah, that, that, uh, that are spewing the bad, the yeah. bad stuff. So at Latin Catholicism on Instagram, clearly very traditional guy. Clyde Clyde Guzman. Okay. Oh, he's so dude. He's awesome. Super cool dude, but very traditional. Very traditional. But you know what? Doesn't do it. He doesn't lead with hatred or lead with. You're going to he he says what he thinks. He says what he believes. He shares our stuff. He we have we've had great conversations yeah, back and forth. He's an amazing he's, guy. He's an amazing dude. And that's the kind of people we need on both sides. Yes. To say, let's bridge the gap here. Let's have a difference of opinion, but respect and love each other as human beings still. Right. But but, but instead you get count you get the, the church militant, you get basic Catholic, I'm not afraid to say it. Like he his entire platform is is hate. His entire platform is is attacking others. Is it, right, right now it's like all political, but like it's just it's it's what I was talking about before. Is you know in you gain traction when you are so polarizing. When you're such a polarizing figure, you take such a stance, and people are drawn to that controversy, to that hate, to that negativity. And it's like you're a big Catholic platform, church militant, any all of them. Like stop stop with the hate. Con your all your comments and all your posts and everything is just calling out people, calling out the negative, calling out what people are doing wrong, why why this is wrong, why that's wrong, why that's wrong. Well, what are you doing right that you can help the pro that you can help all these problems that you think are out in the world? What are you doing to help it besides throwing out more negativity in the world? Right. That's that's it, right there. What are you doing to? Um, <laughs> To bring the opposite of what you if you if everything is so if everything's so awful what are you doing to make it better because from what from where i'm sitting it looks like you're just throwing more negative on it yeah there's a reason guys that uh, and we'll go into this if you're listening together dudes is pretty much a lot of ryan in my face <laughs> and we share our face you said our faces our it's face. a lot of us and our quotes and our oh, on, podcast, on, instagram. on our instagram yeah there isn't a lot of memes We've been sharing more memes from other people. Like we share a lot from when, when Father Cook posts something funny or when Catholic Connect, our buddy, posts something funny. We'll share it. But the reason is because we want to stick by what we uh, what we say. We're looking we're, for we're, we're, we're looking for positivity there. We couldn't find it. Yeah, so it's too hard it. to find positivity. <laughs> but we stick to what we're doing because I'm not about like our platform isn't like let's call everybody out. We're not here to start arguments. We're here to love the Lord. And we're, we, here to, we're here to inspire, push people yeah. to know Jesus, to find and have a real relationship, have an emotional connection, build a community of people. Yeah. That's what we're looking for. And if we wanted, so, and that's why it comes down to why are you doing this? What is your platform for? And uh, I don't think we're doing this to be millionaires, Danny. I don't. I don't know if. If I, I so, to, it's not working. I hate to burst your bubble, but you know, we, at the time of this podcast, we have just shy of four thousand followers. It's not that much. And but uh, I, I tell you, if we built a platform of negativity, of polarization, of hate, of attack, an, of an attack campaign, uh, we probably would have a lot more followers. Probably right. But that's not what we're about. That's not why we're doing this. We're no. doing this to to evangelize the good, the the true, the goodness, the the beauty, the truth. But we're trying to lead with that beauty aspect of it. We're trying to bring people closer to Christ through leading through through what we feel is beauty, and and not not lowering ourselves down to these attack campaigns. Yeah. It, 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 it. And like you, people can say that all they, there's going to be plenty of people that say that we're doing it wrong, or that we like like if you love the church and you love God so much, you should be doing whatever it takes to save people from going to hell and everything else. And my thought I have is a point on that. When you're my done, thought is I don't have a gavel. You know, I'm not the judge that gets to make that decision. My job is to love God, love my neighbor, and invite as many people as I can to join me in that. Yeah. That's it, period. That's my mission statement. Uh, and, I, you know, I, that's it. That's all you here's, here's my point. Maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe these people who are attacking, maybe they're right in some cases. Maybe, maybe this person could be going to hell. I, it's not for me to say. Um, it's not for them to say either. 
but our job should be to be we want to save save souls and and, and get everyone to heaven that should be our job as catholics mm-hmm. right so you know people people that say i'm i'm only saying this because i love you i'm saying this because i love you as a brother and i'm giving you the hard truth so that you can change your ways so maybe they're right in terms of that person needs to change that person needed i whatever the case may be for that particular person maybe they do need to change but coming at them showing or going back to the the good the, the the beauty the goodness and the truth in that order if you come at them with the truth but you haven't earned that respect by showing them the beauty or the or the goodness they won't listen and they'll push away further the other direction so if you if you, even if and especially especially if you know that person like if if they're coming at you in a real life face-to-face conversation and they're saying i love you as a brother and i'm telling you this i'm telling you this hard truth to so you can fix your fix yourself right but like you haven't earned that earned that trust by showing them that you love them as a brother by doing anything for them that uh in that regard then why and why the hell would they would they listen to you so we we need to to lead to understand one another to lead with that goodness with that beauty to to truly understand our brothers and sisters in Christ to show them the love to show th- and 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 meet in the middle or or at least have them get have them get closer to your viewpoint and and understand you and you understand them and they might be more receptive to hear what you need to say if you really believe that what you are doing is 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 in any sense, is absolutely correct. Sitting over here behind your wall, yelling at the other side about how wrong they are, isn't going to get anybody to come over to your side. Where it's going to get them is if you walk to the center and you reach out your hand across the line and you say, hey, I have a way that's really amazing. If you'd love to, I, I'm here with you and I want to take you there. That's how you do it. That's what Jesus did. Jesus didn't sit up and go, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. He came down and said, let me show you a different way. He didn't scream and yell. You know who screamed and yelled that everybody was a heretic and that everybody was doing it wrong? The Pharisees. Yeah. All those people, the Sadducees. Those are the people that went and screamed and yelled just like all this hatred is doing on both sides. And I'm there's plenty of people that are saying that the traditionalists are horrible people too. I'm not saying that all the Nova Soto folk are perfect angels. No, there's plenty of people on that side too that are awful. You know the best way that years and years and years and years and years ago that uh, that people were able to effectively evangelize cultures? So say the the European priest who wanted to go to the Eastern uh, cultures to, to evangelize them. In the midst of like terrible persecution, uh, if they just came in and said... Hey y'all, like we know this guy or we we heard about this guy. He's awesome. His name's Jesus Christ and you should come to love him and we're going to teach you all our European ways about how to love Christ and you're in like Japan in 1200 they're going to be like uh you're dead. You're dead or like there's the door. They're not going to be receptive to that. So uh I forget who said it or what the quote was exactly, but it's something along the lines of I'm going to go in your door. I'm going to enter into your door, into your house, but you're coming out my door. Enter into their culture, understand them fully as a, as a human being, as a culture. And, for, and once they begin, they, only then can you begin to show them the beauty of what you have to offer. And then they'll, then they'll want to enter or to leave out of your door. Yeah, that's great. That's the only way you can do it. Because if you're too busy screaming. I no, totally butchered that quote. But it's but okay. That's, that's I get your point. Because if you're too busy screaming from the doorway, nobody's coming there. Nobody's walking over to go, oh, yeah, that looks interesting. I'm going to go over there. Nobody's coming. Yeah. Nobody's knocking. Everyone's just going to go, that's the house I stay away from. Jehovah's Witness coming by. Have you heard about Jesus Christ? No. See you later. Goodbye. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's not, I, I mean, how many times has someone says a Jehovah's Witness or a Mormon come to the door and screams and, at them? And, and, and they knock and they're like, have you heard about Jesus? And someone's like, yeah, you know what? <laughs> to uh, Come on and let's talk. I'll speak on that really quick, though, because I've had plenty of, of the, the Mormon mormon missionaries that come to my door and you know what i've done many times you guys want to come in and grab a coffee let's have a chat i've done that once yeah and we've talked yeah and did i change their mind no did they change my mind no did we have good conversation and try to understand each other and find some common ground kind of but we had good conversation yeah 
where, but imagine where, if I was just the point like, of contact. There. Imagine if yeah, I just right? shut the door, said "Have fun in hell," and close the door. Yeah, exactly. What, what does that do for anyone? Right. That's going to create a more a, a worse taste in their mouth for Christianity, for Catholicism. Yeah. And it's just going to create a bigger divide. And that's what so many people on, uh, in real life, but mostly on social media, are doing. They're just <sighs> they're yelling from the sidelines, and it's doing nothing but bad. I'm thankful that Jesus and the disciples, the early the early disciples, the early apostles. I'm thankful that they didn't act the way that a lot of these hateful Facebook comments act when they were building the church, when they were, when they were doing, when, when Jesus was doing his mission, I'm thankful, I'm blessed. This is why I worship this is why I love Christ, that he didn't act this way, that when he said, Hey, follow me. And if people said, you know, hard pass, no, I'm good. Well, people did, but like, well, sure. Yeah. But did he go, I hate you. Right. I hate you. He didn't. No, he said to his disciples, he goes, some people don't know. We just heard it. I did a Tuesday thought on it where we talked about uh, uh, Jeremiah. When Jeremiah, the opening of the first uh, reading was, oh, you duped me, oh, Lord. Because he goes like, God, like you sent me to talk to these people and you knew they weren't going to listen. And he's like, oh, well, <laughs> go anyway. Don't stop talking. Right. And I don't think that Jesus meant that in a way of hatred. So that's why we're going to keep talking about positive. We're going to keep talking about how great God is and how amazing a relationship with the Lord is and how much peace we need and how much love we need in this world and how much connection there can be. I'm not going to chastise and kick you out of my life. And that's like anybody that disagrees with me and wants to have a discussion, send, us, send me a message. Send us a message. I'll I'm, talk, a, I'm happy to talk to you. Yeah. I'm going to press it even further and say that all this hatred, all this all this negativity is literally a form of Christian persecution in our day. And I, I say that as a transition because I'm wearing this t-shirt today. This is the March for Martyrs t-shirt because today we're filming this on Thursday, but in two days we are going to be marching in Long Beach, California. So when you see this, if we air this this Monday, we it was two days ago, but we, um, we're we attending. This is a first time ever in the United States. There'll be an organized march for Christian persecution. Uh, and it's a wonderful organization. Super this, excited about it. And it's just doing such great things, shining a light on this, you know, this this topic that, that, that the Christian persecution is alive and well in our world. Now, in uh, a lot of what uh, what well, she go ahead. Well, I'll go to that because like we're talking about those Christian persecutions where there's people all over the world that have to hide their faith, that can't go out on the street or else there'd be fear of being killed or attacked. You know, and, and it's like they're just living out their love for Christ the best that they can in that moment, you know, and with these same people that are, would they go off and be like, um, attention, why aren't you doing it exactly the way that we're saying you need to do it? Like, oh, cause they can't because they'll be in big trouble. But like, like they're doing, they just, does God love them less? These people that, that, because they, they're, they're doing the best they can with what they've got in their horrible situation. Of course not. Of course not. God loves everyone. God loves all people that are trying that that and and all people that are trying to live their faith the best that they can. And we we have it easy here in the United States. Yeah, you know, being ripped apart online and stuff like that. Sure, it can be a mild form of that. It seems of, pretty watered down. We're not being driven from our homes. We're not being executed. Yeah, We're not facing sure. the sword. But uh, don't be that. Don't be these people online don't that are them. you know that are a watered down version of that. That are, that you're attack. You're literally attacking your fellow Christians yeah, by what saying, you're doing. Oh, you're not doing it my way. Then I hate you, and that you're going to hell. Yeah, that's because <laughs> hello. It's the problem. You're, you know, one of the, like we, we talked about at the very beginning of the episode, Bishop Barron, that you're attacking one of like, uh, I, I think one of the greatest bishops who's done so much for our, 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 Absolutely. our church these days, He's huge. Who's, who's evangelizing in, in amazing, amazing ways online. And so many people are attacking him. He's being persecuted, right? So this is, that's, we're not only marching for, we're standing in solidarity, in solidarity with the people in the Middle East, with the people uh, across the world that are being persecuted for their faith in many physical ways and horrendous ways. But we're also standing in, pers in solidarity for the persecuted uh, on, on, online, for the persecuted in, in ways in, in, the, in, the United, in the United States being uh, the persecuted in our churches here. Our statues are being uh, beheaded. Our churches are being burned down. It's, it's happening. It's alive and well across the world. And we can't even battle against those people that are attacking the church because we're too busy fighting each other That's all right. the time. That's right. So let's find the unity. Let's find the points of contact. You know, we're never going to agree, but we can find we can find the truth and the beauty in the person behind. We can find the common ground. We can find uh, 
the, the child of God that's speaking the things that under and understand where they are coming from. Yeah. And maybe we'll be able to, to uh, understand one another so we can, we can stop, stop with the hate. That's what this episode's about. Stop hating, you know, keep loving. So, uh, hopefully you went to the March if you're in Southern California, that's, uh, what is it? September 9th. That's what the date's going to be or was or something like that. No, September 5th. Okay. September 5th. If you missed it, hopefully uh, you'll come next year. And I'm sure it's going to be a great, great day full of um, prayer. There's speakers, there's music, all going to be outside. We'll be wearing our masks. We'll be taking some video. We'll be vlogging. It should be pretty fun. So if you're there, hopefully uh, you pop in and say hello to the yeah. two Catholic dudes. It's going to be super hot, like super 109 hot. degrees, they said it's going to be. So looking forward to it, though, really. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's we're super excited about this. We haven't done an event. event. We haven't been to, able to go to an event together in a while because of COVID. So this is kind of our first one, we uh, and we're excited. Change out of the sweatpants, put on some shorts. It's <laughs> going to be a great day in the sun. We'll be super hot, but uh, for a wonderful cause. So, yeah, so continue. That's I think that's that's we're, that's, we're, a that's a wrap. I'm let's sure let's this, land this, plane. this episode's going to stir up some conversation and we hope that that, that it, you will and we hope that you if you agreed with us you know great put a comment if you disagree with us great put a comment and uh you know hit that thumbs keep, up keep doing our thing hit, hit ring that little bell so you uh stay up to date with the two catholic dudes what we're all about if you're not on youtube if you're just watching listening or if you're just listening from your car or wherever we appreciate that but you know what we don't get is a lot of comments on the audio or well, uh, on the spot like spotify well, what'll kind of help stuff. is if you're listening on apple or spotify hit subscribe to the podcast hit, like subscribe and put it on your podcast channels on your phone it does help it, yeah it, it helps us get to the top of the list when we're searched in the christian path the podcast world you can hit subscribe on those yeah because if we're pages deep no one's gonna find it exactly right? so the the more downloads and subscribers we get the the more uh we get in that in right the, and it just takes a list. second to hit the thumbs up or wherever you're listening if it's like you hit five stars or hit a thumbs up or and whatever just give us some positivity if this is doing something good in your life we really yeah. appreciate it and if you're subscribed you'll get notified when uh when we have a new episode right again uh, we're on patreon if you guys feel so inclined uh we're so blessed with some great patrons so far but if you want to uh help support us financially on that site it's patreon.com forward slash two catholic dudes that's going to help continue to help us grow so we can get more we can continue this production yeah uh we can continue to do great things i hopefully i think i hope we're doing great things but uh we also have a bunch of new members that just joined us on instagram that's where we do most of our stuff so we want to welcome you guys if you're new to the channel and uh, feel free to share it with your friends. That's what really helps us grow the most. Is just to, to, you know, it's it, that takes a second too. You just hit that little share button on whatever platform you're on, you know, and that's how people can start to discover us. So we thank you for that. All right, I think that's everything, guys. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for supporting. Uh, we love you. That's right. And we support you. And uh, go out there and find the beauty that Christ has laid before your life, uh, because. Uh, we love you very much. God loves you more. And uh, you are destined for great things. God has a plan. It's up to us to go out and find it. Woo. All right. All thanks right. for listening, guys. We'll see you next week. Peace. Peace.